YouTubers, Daniel here for the Smoky Mountain Gun Show, and this is episode two of my ongoing series, The Amateur Armorer. Um, on this um, episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix your hammer snag in your AK variant. Um, hammer snag is when you, and actually how to smooth up your your uh, bolt uh, in your AK. Um, hammer snag is when you pull your bolt back and it gets hung up right there on your hammer. Mine right here, I'm, I'm halfway done with it. Actually, almost three quarters of the way done. But it's when it hangs like that right there. And uh, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to show you how to fix that. Um, and make it run a little bit smoother. Now what you do is you're going to have to have a Dremel tool. If you don't have a Dremel, you're going to have to have a set of files. Um, now these cobalt needle files, you can get them at Lowe's. For 20 bucks, you get this whole set. Um, and they work excellent. These things are lifesavers. But uh, these will work, but take a lot longer. Um, but uh, if you have a Dremel or anything, any Dremel... Uh, like tool, you can fit the Dremel accessories down in. That'll be excellent. Okay, so what we're gonna do to fix that problem is this is my old Tapco G2 hammer. I've since replaced it with a full auto hammer, um, but this was the hammer that was in it. Now, if you take your AK hammer out and look at it, it's it's a big old hammer, big blocky hammer. And what we're actually gonna do is change the angle uh, on your hammer um, and polish it up. Uh, to make it run smooth uh, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. So first off what you're going to want to do is you're going to need a punch, you're going to need some kind of little hook like this. You can get them at any hardware store, Lowe's or whatever. I got these from Sears for a dollar. Come with a set of four. Um, but it uh, kind of looks like the dentist hook, you know. You're going to have to have one of them and uh, uh, hammer, you know, to knock punches out if necessary. Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, take this weapon apart. You want to do a safety check. No rounds in the weapon at all. So, I'm going to go ahead and disassemble like you're going to field strip the weapon. Go ahead and take off your dust cover. Take out your recoil spring. Pull your bolt back. And there you go. Now, Go ahead and separate your bolt from your bolt carrier because we're going to concentrate on this as well and also your bolt. So, in there, you're going to want to have to take out the guts, uh, especially the hammer. So, we'll go ahead and just gut it and, and that'll kind of show you guys how to gut it as well. So, you want to go ahead, hold on to, the, to your hammer, press the trigger, and release your hammer. Okay? Now you gotta take your safety off. Take your safety off, pull up all the way, and pull out. Now, right here, I have a retainer plate. Most of you guys, if you haven't put a retainer plate in your AK variant, you're gonna have what you call a retainer wire. Now, it looks like a little bent paper clip. It's around your axis pins. Now, to get that out, it's a, it's a pain. And to get it in, it's a pain. But if you don't have a retainer plate, I honestly suggest order you one. I bought this off Apex Gun Parts for uh, five bucks, and it saves me so much headache. Getting that retainer wiring back in, it, it's, it so makes me not even want to fool with it. Uh, but anyway, if you have a retainer wire, I, I can't show you because I don't have one anymore. What you're going to want to do is get you a, a hook. That hook won't work. Um, it might, but you're going to be fooling with it for a while. You're going to want to get you a hook like this. And you're going to want to get in there, bend uh, the wire out from around your axis pins, and get you a pair of small needle nose, and pull that wire out. Okay? Because your pins won't come out unless you get it out. But if you got a plate, just go ahead and take your plate out. Um, and I'm telling you guys, if you don't have one of these retainer plates, get one because they're a lifesaver. That's all you got to do is pull that plate out. So much easier. Okay? Now your axis pins are free. Now, what you want to do now is take this hook, grab your uh, hammer spring, take it up over your hammer like so, 
Well, then be careful because it will kick back on you. Set it up on your hammer. Like so. Okay. Now take the other, your other side, bring it up around, and crisscross those wires. And what that does, now be careful guys here, because if they fly back and hit you, it's going to hurt. What that does is release tension. It'll be a lot easier to get that bolt out now, or that pin out. Now what you want to do is go ahead and take your trigger pin out, get your punch. You might be able to just push it out. Take your axis pin out and reach down in there and pull your trigger out. If you got a G2 trigger, Tapco G2 trigger, more than likely you do, it's just going to be one piece like that. But if you don't, here's the way it's going to come out. It's going to be two pieces like this. Like that right there. Okay? And it's easily put back together. So we'll go ahead and just leave that separate. Okay, now, take your hammer pin out. You might have to knock this one out. Nope, no, mine pushed right out. Now, be careful when you take this hammer out where you got it crisscross. Go ahead and grab a hold of it really tight. Twist and pull out. Okay? Now make sure you keep a hold and make sure them things are still crisscrossed. And gently lay it down. Okay? So now you got it gutted. You don't wanna you don't have to worry about uh, this part anymore. Now, go ahead and take your hammer. You wanna very carefully uncrisscross these. So find out which one's on top. This one, bring it around, then bring this one around, like so. Wiggle your your hammer out, and there's your hammer. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what to do. We're going to move it over here to the vise. Okay. Now you want to go ahead and put. Your, if you got a vise, use a vise. Go ahead and put your hammer in a vise. Get your Dremel tool. Um, now the, the bits you're going to want to use is the smaller um, orange grinding stone. Then um, you want to follow it up with the green um, grinding stone, the little small one that looks like that. Then you want to get your fine um, sanding uh, cylinder and follow it up with that. Then we go into the polishing stage. So go ahead and what we're going to do is I've already worked on this one, but what we're going to want to do is change the angle um, to where it's a it's a lot. I mean, you can use your brain here and see what angle you want to go with, but usually on an AK hammer, if you look at it, it's going to be coming up very sharp, over sharp, down like a block, and you want to change it to where it's kind of circular. Okay. Now, don't worry about taking too much off. You can kind of see how much you need to take off. Um, go ahead and look at it dry fired a couple times in your weapon and find out where it's making contact with the firing pin. And don't take off a lot in that area. But don't worry about taking off too much because this is a big fat hammer and they're made to make contact with the firing pin. Um, so don't worry about taking too much off. But but you'll know kind of if, if you're going to want to do this. Um, You've, you've got to just kind of understand how the hammer functions and, and how much not to take off. So um, basically what you want to do is just change that angle. And uh, you won't take, you'll take off uh, enough to where you won't have hammer snag and it'll still make contact. Um, but, uh, and that'll be way before you take off too much. If you get rid of that hammer snag, um, you're good. Um, but, uh, it takes a lot to take off too much uh, to where it ain't making contact with your firing pin. So go ahead and put it in a vise uh, and uh, go ahead and start working on your angle. Like I said, I, I ain't completely done, so I had to take off a little bit. What you want to do is just work on an angle to where it's really uh, smooth and circular. You want to stay away from the middle area right here. About right here, you don't want to take that down because that's where it makes contact. You just want to change the angle back here and make it circular and not too much. You know, it's a steep. You've got a, you've got a steep angle if you look at your AK hammer coming up and over, okay? 
you want to take that steep angle and 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 give it more of a a, a slope than a really steep slope. You want to um, downplay that slope. And that's basically what we're going to do here. Okay, now we can get the green stone. Now the green stone, what it's going to do, you're going to kind of want to do it in stages. That's a finer stone. Now what you're ultimately doing here by doing it in this process, you're, do, you're taking it down in stages. If you were to just use that stone, the orange stone, and then go in to polish it, you're not going to get as smooth of a polish. You gotta have to t you're going to take it down in stages before you polish it. Now this, for some reason, I don't know why, but when I put the sand and disc on it, this thing goes crazy. So we're going to put it on low. You really don't need to put it on high with the sand and disc. Cause you're not really trying to take off at this moment. You're just trying to smooth it out. So you can run your Dremel on low with the sander. So the next step is to get your polishing disc and some compound. Now I bought this compound at Lowe's. It's the number five Porter Cable high gloss compound. That's what you want to get. It comes in a big stick. And uh, put your Dremel on low. Get you some on your disc. And go ahead and keep it on low to, to polish it out. If you want, you can go ahead and polish up here, which I've already done, but I'm going to do it again. Polish up where your trigger uh, makes contact with your hammer. If you polish that up, it'll kind of lighten your trigger pull a little bit. If, uh, not, not much at all, but if anything, it'll make things run a lot smoother. So you can go ahead and polish up the whole hammer if you wanted to. But I definitely polish where my trigger makes contact with the hammer anyway. And I did the same with the trigger. I polished the, the hook on the trigger where it made contact here. But go ahead and buff this out until you see a mirror finish. Okay, now that you got it polished, you want to go ahead and remove the polishing compound residue on it. So go ahead and get your rag and put any kind of whatever cleaner you use gun cleaner and you can go ahead and uh, remove all that compound on there okay now putting it back together you want to go ahead I got my frame over here go ahead putting the hammer back together you want to take your hammer spring um, when it, if it's sitting like so with your arms facing down and your notch facing forward on the bottom like so you want to put your hammer in like so. Okay, like sitting, facing like that. Okay. Now take your hammer spring, flip the arms around the front to where your notch is making contact with the back of the hammer like so. Now take your arm, flip it up and around like so. Where it crisscrosses like, like it did before and make sure you got it nice and secure to where it's not going to fly apart okay now take your gun that's where you put your reinstall your hammer now be careful hold on to your wires your hammer goes in like so just like you took out with a twist put it in sideways then give it a twist to seat it back. Now once you get it in place, go ahead and keep hold of them wires. Take your axis pin, start it, seat it in. Now make sure them wires are still in, in place before you let go of it. Okay, now it's in place. Take your trigger, oh, forgot to put it back together. Okay, to put your trigger back together, if it's two pieces, you got your little spring, 
like so. And then your trigger, you can see where it sits into place. Go ahead and seat it together. Put the pin in. Not putting it in the wrong way. Like so. Goes together like so. Okay. Now that you get your trigger put back together, you want to sit it back in your gun. So go ahead, seat it back. And it's, it's common sense on how it goes back in there. Go ahead and put your axis pin through. Okay, your axis pin is through. Now take your plate. If you don't have a plate, then I, I cannot explain how to put it back in, but with the wire, you want to go ahead and straighten your wire out. Now run your wire from the hammer side to the trigger side the, through your axis pins. And it's going to want to go, you want to make sure when you do it, pu push your axis pin in to where it grabs that notch. But push it under the hammer axis pin and under the trigger axis pin. And once you find out you got it under there and in the notch, you want to bend it up around your trigger and bend it up around your hammer. Okay, best way I can explain it, people. But your plate, you just slide it back in. Like so. It's hard to translate this to camera. Okay, once you got your retainer pin or retainer plate fixed or your retainer wire, whatever, you take your safety put it in now pull in on your trigger give your safety a firm push down lock it into place take your hook and unhook your wire Make sure they're seating where they're supposed to seat on your trigger. On your trigger, <clears throat> go ahead and depress your hammer. Now, on your bolt, I've already done it, but what you want to do to make it run a lot, a little bit smoother, is go ahead and polish up right here. Polish up your rails on both sides. Actually, as a matter of fact, polish all that. Polish all that up. You could even polish the rail where your bolt runs and everything. And take your bolt and polish the underside of your bolt right here. Polish it up. And actually, if you want to, you can actually take one of them files. Now, don't do it with the Dremel. You might take off too much. But you can file down right here just a, just a tad bit to kind of steepen, uh, take that angle down to make it not so steep. And that will help with your hammer snag too. But it's just a little bit on that. Then polish it up. So go ahead and put your bolt back together. Put it back in. Recoil spring. Dust cover. And there you go. And it runs a lot smoother. Bye bye hammer snag. You got a smooth running bolt, no hammer snag. So there it is folks. Hope this has been helpful. Um, this has been Daniel for the Smoky Mountain Gun Show. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, do so. Carry on the Second Amendment rights bestowed upon us all. And as always, you guys have a very nice day.